Hey y'all, welcome back to Cajun Country Living. Today, right where we are standing, we are gonna start pouring another dry pour concrete slab. This has been one of our most requested videos ever since we even started YouTube. I'm gonna put the link to our first ever dry pour slab right here if you wanna go check that out. And we are gonna do an update of that slab also in this video, so stay tuned for that. Now the dry pour slab that we're gonna be building today is just gonna be temporary because eventually there's gonna be a large patio area right here. So in the summertime, we use this door all the time. It's straight into our utility room. So we are definitely gonna need something temporary instead of all the mud tracking through the house. And we're still building on our house in case this is your first video. We're doing a building series, so y'all check that out. But this is definitely not a main priority to get the permanent slab done right now. So this is gonna be perfect in the meantime in less than 60 bucks. Now in our other video, we were very, very new to YouTube and it was actually only our third video that we put out. So we were still learning. So bear with us if you go back and watch that video. But in this video, we're gonna get a lot more detailed into actually how to do this and just more tips and tricks for y'all. So hopefully with this lab, this video, we'll be able to clarify a lot of the little details that we left out of the first video. This is a simple, simple way to be able to achieve getting a slab without having without having to try to schedule a concrete truck, pay a minimum charge fee because this is a small slab, and it is actually cheaper than just going and buying pavers and putting by the door. And then with this, you don't have the grass growing up between there, one paver settling lower than the other, and it looking like a mess eventually. And this is something really nice that we're gonna be using 80 pound bags today, but you can get 60 or 40. So if you see us packing these heavy bags, don't let that deter you from trying this out, y'all. This is gonna be such a great project for anybody who wants a small patio. They wanna do it inside a garage even, sidewalks, so many things, dog kennels. There's so many options to do with this. And like Jim said, at a very, very minimum price. We poured a few of these already. And whenever we first moved here, we poured a patio in front of our RV. Now we did that traditional method of getting a cement mixer and making the pour that way. The slabs that we've dry poured do not have one single crack, not one single chip. The one that we mixed is full of cracks. So you be your own judge on what you want to do. This is simple. It is easy. Anybody can do it. So here we go. Well, the first order business is knocking down all the humps in front of the door in order to level the ground where the slab is gonna be. And I also had a little helping hand. The reason that you want the ground level is to make sure you get a consistent thickness when you set your forms. It also is gonna help to get a more accurate measurement on how much concrete you're gonna need. This is gonna be a five foot by five foot slab. So that's what we're measuring for now. We measured from all four corners to make sure that we had plenty of room to set our forms. So we pour this slab, we want a pretty good grade on it. The eaves of the roof is gonna dump right down on top of this slab and we do not want it running towards the house. So we're gonna end up putting the top of the slab at about the four inch mark. We're gonna grade down until it gets to an inch and a half. And that's right, the slab is gonna be an inch and a half thick at the bottom. Side profile, slab's gonna look like that. Water hits, water runs away from the house. So we are in South Louisiana. We don't have an issue with the ground heaving from frost or anything like that. So if you live up north, man, it's getting close to fried chicken time. <laughs> <laughs> but if you live in a northern state or if you live somewhere that it gets really cold and you have an issue with heaving or any of that kind of stuff, this might not be the application for you or it might be, I don't know. We don't live in an area where that happens. But if it were me, I wouldn't let that deter me at all. I would scrape some of the topsoil back and get to the high compacted soil and I would build my forms and pour my slab. So we're getting to the part where we need to start making our forms. In our first video, 
we cut all of our corners on a 45 and everybody said well why did you do that why don't you just zip them on through a screw just like this well honestly you can do that but the only reason that we didn't is because we only have these three inch screws here at our house and we're just using all of our old stuff so like this lumber came from just a project that we had done in the house and this is pretty much just scrap left over from building so we're using what we have on hand and as you can see there's no way that that screw would make it to hold this form so instead of going and buying some new screws to do this we're just gonna set all this aside to do is take our saw slide it all the way over to 45 and zip them off we do want our form to be a perfect five by five so that's the reason that we're going to be using 90 degree angles today now you can make your form however you want to out of whatever you want to y'all get creative and make sure to tag us in the videos if you do try this or send us some emails we love to see what y'all have done on your projects So if you are gonna use this type of form and use the 45 degree angles, the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to measure five foot from the short end to the opposite short end. Now I'm just gonna have to turn my saw completely the opposite 45. So now we got a 45 on each end and we're gonna do that two more times. I'm gonna straight cut this because it's gonna butt up right against the house and the house is gonna act as our back formation of our slab. So I went ahead and lined up this joint and pre-drilled where my screw's gonna go. It's kind of overkill, but I wanted to have a real tight flush square joint so it just helps me get it straight if we were just going to pour a flat slab we could just lay these forms down make sure they're level and go but being as our slab is going to be on an angle we're going to set it in place and make sure that we got the elevations right so here we're gonna put these forms in place and make sure that they're at the right height because we're not gonna use stakes to screw this form too. That'll get in the way of our screeding, which you'll see later. So now on the inside of this frame, it is a perfect five foot by five foot square on the grade we were looking for. So what I'm gonna do now is take this marker paint because out here, you gotta remember, this isn't gonna be but an inch and a half. And I know, I know, I cannot wait for the comments to start rolling in because all the concrete whispers out there is gonna be like, you can't have organic material underneath your concrete slab. <laughs> <laughs> but you can. This is gonna be foot traffic only. If it does settle, it's not gonna be much because this house pad goes way out here and this is a little bit of topsoil drug back in for the grass to grow. So I think we're gonna be okay. So everywhere that I paint, I'm gonna dig out a little bit because with the water running off the house, we don't want it to undermine the side of the slab. And digging a little tiny chain wall all around the outside perimeter of this thing is just gonna help keep that water from undermining the slab and that's all we're after. We have our form exactly where we want it. We leveled it and everything looks perfect. So the next step is gonna be to take this dirt or extra dirt that you dug a hole in your backyard. <laughs> and you're gonna to wanna to pack all these cracks in open spaces where you see on the side. So the more compact that you do it, the more likely you are to get that perfect shape. 
So right now, if we just left this big gap open, for example, right over here, all that concrete would pour out over on this side, outside of the form that we made. So we're just gonna take this dirt, you can take sand, whatever you want, and just make sure that it's piled in and packed in really, really good around your forms. I think it's easier to do by hand. You don't got to do it by hand, but I really feel like you get a much more precise form if you do it like this. And that's a pretty good method if you're doing a five foot by five foot slab. But if you're doing a real deal big slab, yeah, old hands probably get tired after a while. And truly that is all that there is to it. Everything that we used here was stuff that we had around the house. And just because we made our forms out of wood does not mean that you have to. All you need is just something to hold the concrete in. Now, if you notice, we didn't put any kind of reinforcement in here. No wire, no rebar, no anything. This is gonna be foot traffic only. It's 3000 PSI concrete. So unless me and Lydia really pack on the pounds, we should be golden. So is it time to pour? Let's do it. Okay, so we just dumped out a little bit of concrete out of the bags, off the top of the bags, and you can see where the concrete is already wicking the moisture out of the ground into the concrete. And that's how it does. It makes like a capillary action. It'll just wick the, the moisture right through it. So when you get the concrete in the bags, it's pre-mixed. That's why it says on the bag, just add water. <laughs> Crazy chicken. So as long as you add water to the concrete, you're doing what the bag says. We're just gonna do it in a really unconventional way. I just love, love working with these 80 pound bags whenever I don't weigh much more than that. <laughs> Get a good workout in for the day. One of the really, really nice things about working like this with the dry concrete is that you're not gonna be in a rush to try to get this done. Cause we all know if you've worked with concrete before that it dries so quick. This way, you're gonna have plenty of time to get it smooth and exactly how you want it. So we poured just about a third of the concrete so far. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and push it up close to the house and get it about where it's gonna live. Now that we're getting it pretty close to the top of the forms, we're gonna go ahead and take our screed and make sure we don't have any low spots. We've got this pretty near to where we want it. There's a couple little low areas you can see right here. We're gonna fill that in as we go to make sure it's nice and level. Now, whenever you're finishing wet concrete, where you would have your screed, then you come back with a bull float and do all those things to get you a nice smooth finish. Obviously, we're not gonna leave it like this so you can see all the rocks. It just looks like raw concrete. What we're gonna do in order to get these rocks to go away, you have to take your screed and you have to saw it back and forth a whole bunch of times. It makes that powder come to the top.
so we got this slab poured nice and flat it's dry but before we add water to it and start setting this slab up to cure we're gonna go that extra mile and really get this slick if you're doing this and you don't have an edge curler like this which we do we've done a lot of concrete work here I'm gonna go around and soften these edges up a little bit but you don't have to you could go ahead and start your water and process now if you really wanted to but check this out this is how we put a really good finish on dry concrete powder So we got all these edges knocked down and smoothed out. Now, this is the preferred method. <laughs> it's highly technical <laughs> to finish this concrete slab. So it's good, it's flat, but we want it smooth. So you take this concrete roller hoodis, just lightly roll it over this powder, just like magic. How about that, huh? So if you can paint the walls in your house, you can finish a concrete slab like this. So the first time we're going to put water on this slab, we got our nozzle set to the misting setting and we're just going to dampen it enough to change the color. We just want to change it to a dark color and we're going to let that set for one hour. Then we're going to come back. Y'all definitely do not have to cover your slab. We just did in hopes that it would kind of deter the chickens from trying to leave some chicken tracks. And as y'all can see, they are just itching to get on there. <laughs> So the reason we start out on the misting setting is because remember, we have all that powder on top. It would leave big water drops in the finish on your slab. If you used a more aggressive shower pattern, nobody wants that. So we covered the slab back up and we're gonna be back in an hour to check on it. After dampening the slab twice on the misting setting, roughly two hours later, the top has got firm enough to where I can switch it to the shower setting We'll wet the slab down three more times using this setting, waiting an hour in between sprays. And here we are at the next morning. Here's a good close up of the slab. We're gonna give it a few more hours to finish drying and we're gonna pull these forms off. And before we show y'all the result of what that looks like, we are gonna take y'all for a little trip to the backyard of where we had the chicken coop slab. So in order to be able to show y'all 100% what this ended up looking like after a year and a half, we decided to go ahead and move the chicken coop. So not only has this slab had to deal with the weight of this chicken coop, but really what comes with the chickens also. So we absolutely needed to get this thing pressure washed to be able to show y'all.
We definitely want to put the chicken coop back, but we did go ahead and empty it out for a good spring cleaning. And we do have a few ideas of what we want to do with the chicken coop in a few months, but right now it is definitely not our main priority. So it is time to finally update y'all on this first dry pour slab. And there is no denying that this is the actual slab because if y'all remember, we had our chickens that walked right across here and the chicken tracks are still here. So we poured this slab August 16th of 2021, which was a year and a half ago. To this day, we have absolutely no cracks in this slab. We have had no issues, no settling, nothing our slab was five by eight and it was an inch and a half thick so whenever you lay a two by four on its side for example that's the thickness of the slab and it's holding the entire chicken coop which we built very very sturdy <laughs> so as y'all can tell this is held up extremely well As you can plainly see, the slab is still dry in about 24 hours after the pour. We like to wait about 48 hours to remove the form from these dry pour slabs because from our experience, it seems they take a little longer to cure. But we decided to go ahead and pull the forms early so that we could show y'all the results. This project took 10 80 pound sacks of concrete at a total cost just shy of $60. We don't face any task with a mindset of, we can't, or it's always been done that way. Believe in yourself and allow your mind to be open and creative. Because if everyone was scared to try something new, we would all still be driving A model Fords. Well, thank y'all for joining us for this video. We hope you enjoyed it. We have a lot of more projects like this coming up if y'all enjoyed this. So y'all make sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed this. And we'd love to hear your feedback. Please leave us a comment. And if you do try this, please let us know. We really like to hear from y'all. So Cajun family, we'll see you later.